Hello, everybody. This is your magical friend, Chuggy Bear, coming to you from the magical land of a brand new book, Ezra. That's right, we're jumping into Ezra today. Ezra chapter one, I'm awfully excited about. Um, this This book comes to you uh, during during the great reconstruction period of the land of Israel. That's right. They have been in exile for about 70 years. This is about 50 years after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem in the year 538 BCE. And, um, you know, just quick, quick chronological context. If you're trying to read these texts in, like, strict uh, order... Um, Ezra 1 through 6 would come after Daniel 12, uh, just before Psalm 137, Haggai 1 through 2, and Zechariah 1 through 14. Oh, oh, and then Esther 1 through 10. And then you jump back to Ezra 7. Um, but yeah, you know, that'll all be in our notes. Uh, so let's just dive into the text, because I'm Chucky Bear. Hi, I love you. Okay, cool. All right, all right, I'm excited. In the first year... <laughs> that's my deep voice. That's that's my boom voice. In the first year uh, of Cyrus, king of Persia. <laughs> okay, that's kind of hard to do. In order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to put it in writing. This, quote, this is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven. Now, Quick side note, this is this is Chucky Bear, not Ezra. Um, quick side note, that's insane. Okay, that 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 this story has Cyrus, king of Persia, acknowledging that that the God of heaven is is the Israelite God. That 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 he's speaking about like Yahweh. I gotta get into the Hebrew on this because I, I really want to see exactly what terms are being used here. But the whole relationship between Cyrus, king of Persia. And, and and the God of Abraham, well, it's 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 fascinating, and and it, it's going on a list we're going to make and, and write about uh, about especially Old Testament individuals who had no business um, speaking to God or being um, uh, used by God or being in a relationship with God, and yet they were. Uh, so interesting stuff. Okay, back to the text. Uh, continuing the quote. Any, any one of his people among you, may his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem. And the people of any place where survivors may now be living are to provide him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem, end quote. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin, the priests of the Levites, Everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors assisted them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, with valuable gifts in addition to all the free will offerings. Moreover, King Cyrus brought out the articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his God. Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought by Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. This was the inventory. Gold dishes, 30. Check. Silver dishes, 1,000. Check. Silver pans, uh, 29. Check. Gold bowls, 30. Check. <laughs> Just kidding. Check. Matching silver bowls for 10. Check. And other articles or miscellaneous. 1,000. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and of silver. Sheshbazar brought all these along with the exiles uh, when, when the exiles came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. And that's the end of chapter one, because it's pretty short. Chapter two, though, is going to be really, 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 really not fascinating at all. Uh, it, it's a list with a whole bunch of numbers. But anytime, not anytime, no, anytime you see uh, really uninteresting, dull-looking lists, 
uh, genealogies, lists with numbers, you know, that kind of stuff in here. It's usually pretty boring, but there's usually a cool detail or two that's really easy to just pass right over. Sometimes several little Easter eggs. Yeah, these authors, they knew it was up. Anyway, that's to come. Chapter one is read and done by your man Chucky Bear. Um, and there's a lot of interesting facts um, surrounding the context of, of all of this. So we'll be make sure to put all those in the notes. But yeah, just going back to um, my favorite point is is the whole thing with uh, King King Cyrus of Persia. You know, the, the last thing written in Second Chronicles 36 is... Um, is, a, is another quote from the, uh, according to this text, uh, Cyrus, king of Persia. And the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem and Judah. I mean, that sentence, we need to write a blog on that thing, man. That is huge. And I uh, just, just kind of camp out on that for a bit, especially, again, in the, in the, with the backdrop of how God characters were, are, are still written to this day. But, but, you know, especially in the ancient times, this was just, this was so uncharacteristic. This was so upsetting. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot. But um, I'm rambling because I'm Chucky Bear and I should really, oh, gosh, there's so much I want to talk about. Hold on. Let me just think real quick. Um, 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 okay. There's a lot, you know. Such a short chapter, but okay. You know what? No, I should cut it here. Okay, this video has gotten weird and kind of long, and I'm just really excited. All right, I will talk to you soon. Chucky Bear out.